is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 mitsubishi outlander courtesy of platinum mitsubishi in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so this is mitsubishi's three row suv it's been completely redesigned both on the exterior and the interior for the better let me tell you guys and of course to go along with that you have america's best warranty with mitsubishi as well being five year 60 000 mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 000 miles on the powertrain which is amazing and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one acceleration braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust club and everything else so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2022 outlander first one being the es starting at $25,795 se for $28,845 sel for $31,945 SE Launch Edition, which is the one we have today, starting at $29,995. And lastly, the SEL Launch Edition, starting at $35,345. And so, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive. You can add all wheel drive by simply adding $1,800 to any of those prices. And so, regardless of trim level that you go with, power plant on the new Outlander will be the same. Powering this one is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder. If that sounds familiar to you, yes it is the same engine you can now find in the new nissan rogue in case anybody was curious but power comes in at 181 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 181 pound feet of torque coming in at 3600 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a cvt with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit although it is a cvt we're still testing it out but mpg numbers coming in at approximately 24 in the city 31 then on the highway but so then before we do any kind of paddle shift test or acceleration test here in our outlander i did want to mention there is a circular dial located directly behind the shifter that is going to be for your drive modes of course drive modes will include tarmac gravel snow normal and eco and if you were to go with the mitsubishi all-wheel controller the four-wheel drive on this thing you will also get a mud mode then as well which is pretty cool but nonetheless they will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response traction control things like that so having said all of that now what do you guys say Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's just do a quick little paddle shifter test. I'm kind of curious, since this is a CVT, it is going to kind of be simulated shifting, of course, but I do want to see if they react quickly for us and make sure the vehicle doesn't shift for us as well. All right, here comes the paddle shifter test on our straightaway in three, two, one. Oh, it shifted, dang it, there we go. Eh. It still feels like a CVT, I will say that. I like the simulated gears, that's kind of cool, but you can definitely tell it's most definitely still a CVT. Unfortunately, that might be one of my few criticisms of this car. I'm just not a huge fan of CVTs that kind of take a lot of the emotion out of driving this thing. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and give back full control to the Outlander here, find yet another straightaway end. Let's test out the acceleration. Let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, and here's a straightaway in three, two, one, go! <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's definitely not the quickest thing in the world, but that's okay. Who's really going to be racing an Outlander anyways? But yeah, it'll get the job done. But like I said, definitely not the quickest thing in the world. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 13 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's actually really nice. I haven't had any issues with the braking feel so far in my test drive today. Definitely not a super spongy brake feel as you sometimes do find in SUVs. So I don't mind it. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine i actually haven't had any issues with ride quality when it comes to the outlander i would definitely say it's much better than the previous outlander i had tested so absolutely no issues with ride quality whatsoever i'm kind of impressed there as far as cabin noise goes at higher speeds you get a little bit of wind noise but other than that it's really not that bad it's pretty quiet you guys could probably tell i am driving right now and there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin so well done once again mitsubishi for that and as far as steering feel goes it's, 
I would say on the looser side, but it is to be expected with SUVs, but it's really not bad. It's pretty much what you would expect for really any three row SUV out there. I should put it that way. But anyways, touching on visibility, I could see perfectly fine out the back. So 100% no issues there whatsoever. And I did want to also mention if you were to go with that SEL launch edition trim level, you will actually also get a head up display projecting your speed and the speed limit onto your windshield. So a little better visibility there as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior, our completely redesigned 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander finished in mercury gray metallic, in case anybody was curious of our exterior color name here. But let's go ahead and start up front. Again, this one has been completely redesigned inside and out for the 2022 Outlander. Up front, you will find LED headlights with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard on this one. LED fog lights, you guys can see those down below. They will come on the SE trim level and up if you're curious about that and of course surrounding those headlights and really all of the lighting you're going to find some chrome accents as well which definitely look very good up front you have some matte gray design towards the bottom portion of that front bumper too which definitely looks good and i love how they spelled out outlander horizontally on the front of the hood there so anyways definitely looks like a very upscale design so i'm a huge fan of the new front end here of that outlander but now Let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now making our way to the side, silver roof rails coming with the SEL Launch Edition. Rear privacy glass is going to come standard across the board. You guys can see there's some crow belt line molding on the Outlander here as well, which leads its way into the very back with that floating roof line. Also looks very good back there. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for the SE trim level and up, and you will get some integrated turn signals. You guys can probably see those as well. Definitely looks good. Did want to also mention though, for the SEL launch edition, you're actually going to get ground logo illumination. So it's going to project the Mitsubishi logo onto the ground at night. Again, just with the SEL launch edition. So I thought that's pretty stinking cool. But anyways, take a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch alloys coming with the ES, 20 inch two-toned alloys then coming with the SE trim level and up. So overall, once again, very good looking side profile to the Outlander, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one. All right, so now since we are around back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna found on the very top there, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, do like these taillights as well. They are LED. They look very Highlander-esque, actually, in my opinion, but very good look to the taillights. Of course, you have some Outlander badging. There's some trim level badging on the bottom right-hand corner there as well. Got some of that silver accenting found on the front end, brought to the back end there, so that looks pretty good too. And as far as the exhaust setup goes, let me show you guys. It's actually tucked away underneath. There is a single exhaust outlet, but nonetheless, do believe you guys know what we have to do next then. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And so now since we are around back here of the Outlander, did want to mention when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a hands-free power lift gate if you were to go with the SE trim level and up. So that is definitely pretty cool. There is also a button on the key fob itself. That's another way. There's a button on the lift gate itself and there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well to go ahead and open it up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 11.7 cubic feet behind that third row. Of course, the seats do fold down, bumping that up to 33.5 cubic feet behind the second row. And behind that first row with all rows folded, it comes in at 79.7 cubic feet, which is actually pretty impressive for this size SUV. And actually, my 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe, which is a three row, comes in at 80 cubic feet. So this essentially is the exact same size as what I'm used to, which is pretty cool. Maybe that's why I'm digging this thing 
thing so much so far. But anyways, cargo lighting can be found back there. There is a 12 volt power outlet back there as well. There is a cargo cover as well, which I really liked. You can also find grocery bag hooks. There are tie down anchors and there is a little bit of in-floor storage back there as well, which I thought was pretty cool. But nonetheless, making our way up to the rear leg room, that third row is gonna come in at 18.7 cubic feet, which essentially is less than a Ford Mustang. So not a whole lot of space when it comes to the third row. I'm thinking not many people are gonna use that third row. So for the second row leg room, that is actually gonna come in at a respectable 39.9 inches, which is a dang good bit for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Did want to also mention for the SE trim leveling up, you will find a phone charging port and a USB charging port back there in that second row as well, which is pretty cool. SEL trim leveling up is going to give you three zone climate control, and that's always nice. Heated rear seats are going to come with the SEL trim leveling up as well. Rear window sunshades coming with the SEL launch edition trim level, if you were interested in that. Rear ventilation coming with all trim levels, of course. And of course, with this being a three row SUV, seven passenger seating, if I haven't mentioned it already, does come standard on this one, being three seats in the middle, two seats in the very back, and then it's gonna give you that seven. But making our way now up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the ES. SE trim level is going to add leatherette surfaces and they will be heated front seats then as well for the SE. SEL is going to add a power adjustable passenger seat and driver's seat, full leather seating, driver's memory settings as well, which is pretty cool. But I will say we do have the SE, so to speak, the SE launch edition to be specific, but I love the leather suede combination because I have this in my own car as well. I always loved the leather and suede combination. That's just my personal preference and that's what we have here in the SE launch edition. So big fan of that. As far as seat comfort goes, it might be the first thing I noticed when I got in this one. These seats are very, very, very comfortable i will say that absolutely no issues whatsoever in taking a long road trip in this thing of course we got the heated seats there as well so overall when it comes to the seating in the outlander 100 on point without a doubt but Taking a look then at the steering wheel because they also killed it when it comes to the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. And if you wanted a heated steering wheel, you can get it with the SEL launch edition trim level only. But I will say the 10 to 2 grips, everything's bolstered a little bit thicker than you would traditionally find on other three row SUVs out there. So for that reason, I'm personally a big fan just because of the thicker grip. So well done Mitsubishi yet again. Then take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. Essentially, you do have all of your buttons located on one side of the key. Mitsubishi logo at the top, lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear hatch. But essentially, it is all keyless entry with a push button start for every single trim level across the board. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located just to the left of the air vents there. And so, once started up, once again, the Outlander is outdoing itself yet again. You will get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster if you go with the SEL trim level and up. And of course that includes the SE launch edition and the SEL launch edition as well. But that is currently what you guys are looking at and I love it because it is completely customizable. You will get traditional gauges if you go with any other trims below that. But since we have this, I want to show it to you guys. There are steering wheel mounting controls on the left side of the steering wheel. My favorite particular option to really personalize this, there is a little icon called change meter view. And so if you press that, it really gives the opportunity to choose between more of a traditional gauge cluster where you have the tachometer on your left, speedometer on your right, and a bunch of information found in the center portion of those digital gauges. But then if you press it again, it's my personal preference now because you got the digital speedometer all the way to your right and the tachometer is on your left but it's kind of in this circular display that is unlike any other gauges that I've ever seen so far out there so for that reason I love different and I love that and of course you can check out your outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty and there is a ton of other information you could check out up there as well but once again Mitsubishi you killed it when it comes to the gauges I absolutely love these gauges on this thing but anyways continuing on to overall interior quality panoramic sunroof coming with the SE launch edition trim leveling up that's of course what you guys are looking at right now overhead sunglass holder coming standard for all trim levels across the board auto dimming rear view mirror coming with the SEL trim leveling up 
wireless phone charger coming with the SE trim level and up. Well done, Mitsubishi, for putting that on one of the lower trim levels. That's pretty cool. Three zone climate control coming with the SEL trim level and up. I already mentioned that to you guys. Overall, interior quality is nearly perfect. And that's actually pretty darn good from where Mitsubishi used to be to where they currently are now, which is great. You got this carbon fiber look surrounding the power window buttons on the doors. I absolutely love that. You have some stitched leather found just above the passenger side glove box along with this piano black finish located in between the air vents up there as well. Also have some very soft touch material on the doors themselves, which I absolutely love. You usually don't find that either. Of course, you have a USB charging port directly in front of the shifter. Also a regular phone charging port as well and the 12 volt power outlet. Although again, we got a wireless phone charger, so I would probably just use that. There is an electromechanical parking brake, which is pretty cool, just to the right of those drive mode buttons there. Just behind all of it, you have dual cup holders and within the center armrest, there is a little bit of storage there as well. But like I said, nearly perfect. My constructive criticism when it comes to the interior quality, and I find this in a lot of SUVs and vehicles actually, there is this matte black finish just to the right of the shifter surrounding the electromechanical parking brake. That is unfortunately gonna get scratched up and leave some marks that will essentially be unfixable. So that I don't like. And also that same material is found just in front of the door handles on the front doors here as well. So besides that, it is dang good without a doubt. The interior quality is a night and day difference between what it used to be and still it is better than most of its competition i would even say right now as well so well done mitsubishi that was very good but anyways taking a look now at the infotainment screen there are two of them you can get the eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the es or if you go with any other trim level you're going to get a nine inch color touchscreen display which is what you guys are looking at right now Either way though, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, even with that ES trim level. So that's wonderful. Meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the Outlander. Therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that infotainment screen, no matter what system that you go with. And you can also have the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up on that screen. And there's a bunch of other compatible apps as well, but that is pretty cool that even the bottom trim level gets that factory navigation system is going to come with the SE trim level and up, although you don't really need it these days. You can actually check out some weather information up there if you wanted to you can check out some stock information you can check out fuel prices and of course your radio settings then as well and so when it comes to the sound systems there's two of them for the outlander there is a six speaker sound system coming with the es se and sel trims then there is a 10 speaker bow sound system coming with both of the launch edition trim levels so therefore that's what we have today so what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and uh, Let's test out the clarity of this one. It just keeps getting better with this Outlander, I swear. That sound system was amazing. Bose, you killed it in the Outlander, I will say that. It's weird how some sound systems sound better in some cars than others. Like, I just tested the Bose sound system in a Nissan the other day, Nissan Murano to be exact. And it wasn't anywhere near as good as the one found in the Outlander, which is kind of weird, but kind of cool. So I do like it better in the Outlander. Also, both sound systems are incredibly reliable. I've had them in my cars before. They have never failed me ever. So I'm a big fan of this sound system without a doubt. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put this one in reverse, you will find a rear view camera. Multi-view system coming with the SE trim level and up then, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I always like to mention, IIHS top safety pick for the 2020 model year hasn't of course been tested yet for the 2022 model, but when it comes to safety, typically it only gets better with time. So I would imagine it would at least at minimum be a top safety pick yet again, if not a top safety pick plus. But anyways, front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. Also a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks back there, tire pressure your monitoring system as well but also coming standard on this one forward collision mitigation system blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert lane change assist and reverse automatic braking then as well and if you were to go with that se trim level and up that's going to add a decent amount of extra safety included to that coming with a safety suite known as me pilot assist which essentially is mitsubishi's name brand safety package but anyways if you were to go with those trims you will get adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist lane keep assist lane departure prevention and traffic sign recognition then as well and so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Outlander, if I'm being honest, the exterior styling is brilliant. It looks absolutely amazing. 
Interior is light years better than what it used to be. I absolutely love the interior quality actually in this. It's better than most of the competition right now, believe it or not. So that is absolutely wonderful. Rear window sunshade availability is great. We didn't have it on our SC launch edition trim level today, but I love that that's available because typically with SUVs, you're gonna have some kids in the back and those rear window sunshades are always a big plus, of course. If it were me, if I were to buy this today, I would personally probably get the SEL all-wheel drive just because you do get the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster like I'm looking at right now. You get leather seating, memory settings, three-zone climate control, heated rear seats as well. So that's pretty cool. Also wanted to mention a little fun fact I don't think I mentioned to you guys earlier. The previous Outlander had 66 cubic feet of cargo capacity. This new one, 80 cubic feet essentially 79 point whatever i said but 80 cubic feet that is a massive difference from what it used to be so that's what i'm saying this new outlander is basically a completely different breed from what it used to be so i absolutely love that it's gotten so much better as far as constructive criticism goes besides those gray matte black finishes found right around the shifter there all the only other thing i could think of is maybe some ambient lighting would be cool to see in this thing but other than that this is dang near perfect believe it or not. So I absolutely love this thing. Let me know what you guys think of the Outlander in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. <laughs>